I remember this <laughs> so vividly. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Danielle Brucey and I am back with a new video for you guys and I am bringing you another little story time and as you can tell from the title of this video i'm going to be telling you guys about the time that i may have accidentally secured myself an adrichie sugar daddy here in korea yes <laughs> that happened kind of um i think it's not going to be exactly what you guys think it is but <laughs> It's, it's a very interesting story, an interesting time in my life that this happened. But before we do get started with this video, if you have not done so already, please hit that little subscribe button down below. You can turn on your notifications and get notified whenever I do post a video, which is very rarely. <laughs> Actually, no, 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 no. This month, I have posted every single week, so I'm proud of myself. But anyways, let's just get straight into this story. So we're going to call the main guy of this story, Mr. J. And Mr. J and I, we met at my previous hagwon in Namyangju. And at that hagwon, I used to teach adults as well as children. And adults, I'd usually teach like around lunchtime or in the evening. And Mr. J was, yeah, one of my students and he was the oldest student I had. He was in his 50s. I think or like early 60s he was like around the same age as my dad and he was always 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 kind in my classes and me and all of mr j's lessons were always one-to-one -one, so it was just me and him in the classroom and something that was very common for me with my adult classes was that we would sometimes have the classes outside of the hag one like at dinner at lunch and this is something i actually loved like they would be like oh let me take you to lunch and we'll have the class over lunch and we'll just speak and then they would pay for the lunch <laughs> for the dinner or whatever um which was like really kind, like they were paying for the classes and then they were paying for my dinner or lunch or whatever. So Mr. J would regularly take me out to lunch during his like hour slot of when we would teach and we would go out to lunch and then I would come back to my hag one and he would take me to some, to some nice lunch spots. Um, one time he took me to like this beef spot. Um, I don't remember the name of the beef, but I just remember, um, getting back to the academy and then I told my um like not director but like the manager of the hagwon I remember I was like she was like oh what did you guys eat and I was like oh we ate this beef and at the time I remembered the name but I forgot <laughs> oh I wish I remembered but I was like oh we ate this beef and she was like wait what did he pay and I was like yeah and she was like that's really expensive beef <laughs> and I was like oh is it because I never saw the bill or anything like he just went straight to the front and paid and so she was like yeah that's like really expensive beef and we ate a lot at that restaurant I could tell from the restaurant it was kind of expensive but I didn't realize like it was like you know <laughs> expensive but anyways I was like Mr. J he's got money like he's paying for one-to-one -one adult classes at Hack One and like he's paying for it at lunchtime and usually the adults that I would have come in at lunchtime didn't work I remember one time I did ask him like do you have a job like because you come in at lunchtime and usually people don't have like an hour to study English at 1 p.m. And then he told me like he works in real estate and that's all he ever told me about his job. So I don't know what his job is, but I'm pretty sure he has some money because I've also I also saw his car and he looks like he has some money. So Mr. J actually took a three month course at my Hagwon. Um, so he was only my students for three months. And I remember during that time, at one point, like I think we were having a conversation, I told him I wanted to learn Korean. And he was like, okay, I'm going to take you to a bookstore in Seoul. It's like my favorite bookstore. And it's like this huge bookstore near Gyeongbokgung Palace. Um, I think it's Gyeongbokgung. I think that's the correct name but yeah anyways that palace there's a bookstore near there that's really really big and he was like yeah I'll pick you up at this time and then we'll go there and then we'll get dinner and then I'll drop you wherever you need to go so he takes me to the bookstore and this man dropped nearly a hundred dollars on books for me in just one day of like Korean learning books and like some story books that I wanted 
I was like, <laughs> when like the price came up, I was like, are you sure you want that? Like, like I know a hundred dollars is not a lot, but still, <laughs> like for books, um, it was a lot of books that <laughs> I haven't used that much. So, <laughs> um, yeah. So all my Korean books are actually from Mr. J. Like he bought me all my books, and then he was like, "Oh, what do you want to eat?" And I was like, "Oh, anything with meat, I'm good." And then he took me to this uh, restaurant. Um, and we were around in Sedong, I think, and we were walking for a while, and then we found this restaurant. We ate again he goes up to pay as usual and so yeah we went to the bookstore we went to dinner and then he was like oh where do you want me to drop you do you want me to drop you all the way back in Namyangju he lived in Namyangju too but a different part of Namyangju and so he was like do you want me to drop you all the way back in Masog I was like no I'm gonna go to my friend's house I think we were going out that day I would say I think we were going out that day <laughs> but yeah um so he ended up dropping me to my friend's house which is like north of Seoul and then um, when we get there he was like wait 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 I have something for you <laughs> and this man <laughs> gets out a whole box of pears <laughs> I like I don't know why he had a whole box of pears but he was like this is a gift for you <laughs> and I was like thank you I remember when I came into my friend's house with like this big box, she was like, why do you have a big box of pears? I'm like, my student <laughs> just gave me this big box of pears. Um, so like, I remember we chopped up some pears and ate some. So yeah, he just gave me this big box of pears that day. And then after that, <laughs> he would come into his lessons and he would just start bringing me random gifts. It would be food or sometimes it would be like something to hold a book or like, it was just random. Like, um, I've got, I've still got some of the little gifts that he gave me. And actually, at one point, he gifted me a big box of Spam. <laughs> I'm not even joking, he gifted me a box of Spam. And I was just like, okay, <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> so yeah, he just like, would gift me random stuff. And then it was coming towards the end of his three month course. And he told me, hey, like, I really love your teaching, but I'm not happy with the Hagwon itself. And he doesn't want to renew his, um, his, what's it called? <laughs> I forgot the word. <laughs> Basically, he didn't want to renew his classes. Um, but then he was like, I like you as a teacher and I would like you to continue teaching me. I'm like, okay, yeah, we can still meet on weekends or like before or after work and I can teach you English for a bit. So then we set up this day, we were going to meet and learn English this day. And he was like, oh, I'm gonna show you a few places too <laughs> around Namyeongju. I was like, okay, cool, why not? And he was also like, I'm gonna teach you some Korean. <laughs> I was like, cool, let's do that. So he picks me up around midday and then we drive towards the North Han River, which is oh so beautiful, I love it there. So yeah, we're driving around the North Han River, I'm looking at the views, it's a nice sunny day, it's like really beautiful. And then we go to this restaurant, which he says is one of his favorite restaurants. And I have eel for the first time, actually at that restaurant. Like we ordered like a bunch of food. Like we did it, we left the table with 80% of the food still on there. Like it was so much food. And then we had eel and other fish stuff. And it was really, really good. Like I didn't expect eel to taste good. <laughs> um, I was really nervous when he was like, we're gonna have eel. I was like, Ugh. cause all I could think in my mind was British jellied eels. And I, I don't fuck with British food. <laughs> um, when I say British food, I mean British British food, like jellied eels. But yeah, the food was really nice. And then after we had lunch, we ended up going to like this park. He was like, oh, his friend works there. Um, he's like a ranger, I guess, at that park. And so we ended up, me and his friend, and then we sat inside his friend's office <laughs> and I was like, okay, we're gonna learn English and Korean. We did not do any learning. <laughs> we did not do any learning <laughs> at all. Like none. Like we barely did any learning. We were watching YouTube videos and him and his friend were talking and I like, I think I was writing some Korean and practicing like my writing of the Korean alphabet. Um, but he did not learn any English. <laughs> like I did not teach him anything. And then me and him left and his friend was like, oh, he's gonna meet us at dinner later. And so we're driving back to like my area um, because he said he wants to take me to this Chinese restaurant that he knows that it's around my area. 
and at some point he's like oh I need to go to the bank and so he stops the car <laughs> he gets out goes to the bank comes back and then he just hands me 200,001 and I was like oh <laughs> what and he was like it's for the teaching I was there thinking I didn't teach you shit today like basically you were just taking me around treating me and you're giving me 200,001 like which is like $200 I'm like I like I really did not teach him like at all like we like were mostly trying to speak in Korean and it wasn't like <laughs> I did it. It wasn't like any of our classes before where we actually sit down and we learn something. Like there was no teaching of English going on. Just like a few bits here and there. Like he learned a few phrases like that, I would say. But no teaching at all. So I was like, you don't have to give me like this much money. Like, cause I really did not teach you. We basically hung out, you paid for lunch. <laughs> you took me to this nice park and like you're about to take me to dinner you don't have to give me all this money and so i tried to like give the money back to him and he was like no <laughs> like it's for you like don't try and give it back to me and so i was just like oh thank you <laughs> i just took it and then after that we went to the chinese restaurant and we had like a bunch of food and we had so much soju i'm pretty sure between us we had like six bottles of soju like i drank much less than the guys but still it was like i remember seeing the table at the end there was a lot of soju there and i think he thought i could drink so much soju because i told him about them one time i had like five bottles of soju and so he in his mind thinking oh yeah she can drink five bottles of soju like i did that night <laughs> and i regret it like I was there five bottles of soju arguing with a man that I just met that day like he was my husband I do not want to do that again and then at the end of the night he ends up calling um, here in Korea you can actually call people to like come and drive your car when you're drunk so he called this person they came um, they drove his car they drove me home and then they drove him home and then we did this thing a few times where he would pick me up would go somewhere he would take me to lunch dinner like pay for everything um, and then he would give me money <laughs> at the end like he just kept giving me money and I was like okay um, I'm gonna take this he never ever ever tried anything romantically with me so it wasn't like a proper sugar daddy where they're trying to get some sugar in return for this money like he I feel like he generally thought he was paying me this much money to teach him English even though like we were not learning any English like we were not like doing a proper like <laughs> lesson like I never really felt bad that he was giving me money because like it was his choice I never asked for money in the first place I was happy just to go to lunch with him speak a little bit of English and then go home he was the one who put money in my hand <laughs> By force it was by force he put money in my hand because that first time he did put the money I did try to give it back to him and he was like no <laughs> so I was like cool and like I remember I told my mom about him and my mom was like you need to make sure this man is in your life forever this is a great man <laughs> like my mom loves him she, even to this day she always asks me like oh have you spoken to him, Mr. J and I'm like oh no I should shouldn't I even on Father's Day <laughs> can you believe my mom on Father's Day she was like you should message Mr. J and say happy Father's Day I was like okay mom, <laughs> I'll do that actually yeah at some point Mr. J he did tell me like he wants me to see him as a father so maybe that's why he was giving me money he wanted me to see him as a father and actually <laughs> i remember at some point this was very early on in me and mr j's relationship where he was like i want to be your spiritual father here in korea and you can call me papa <laughs> i was like um i remember when he first said that you can call me papa i was like oh I love it when you call me big pop but <laughs> it was just very like weird a bit like but um, I was like no I'm still gonna call you Mr. J but yeah me and Mr. J we actually haven't spoken for a while um not like any bad blood or anything we just like haven't really spoken because like I moved away from Namyangju to Seoul so I barely spoken to a lot of people I knew back in Namyangju which is so bad like I really should try to like keep those relationships to be honest mr j like i said before he's a really really lovely man this man is also married and he's got children his daughters are like my age i think he has one daughter my age and i think one is older or younger i can't remember but he has two daughters and like he's just he's just a lovely man like i don't understand why he was giving me so much money for like barely teaching him like literally like, was not teaching him and like the fact it was just like 
just for one day 200,001 this is like a lot because like a lesson here in Korea like to learn English like you usually pay like 15 to 20,001 for a lesson um, at Hakon and I'm pretty sure he was paying around that much for my Hakon and this man times it by 10 and gave me that much for one lesson mm. you know that woman who's like money likes me no, I just think money recognizes me Money is comfortable around me. Money likes me. So money feels when it needs someone to talk to, it'll choose me in the crowd and it'll come and sit next to me. Whether it comes in a form of whatever, but it will choose me. Like that was how I felt like the time. I was just like, money likes me. Money just wants to find me. I'm not even doing anything and money wants to come to me. So yeah, that's the story of how I accidentally found myself <laughs> uh, an Adrishi Sugar Daddy. Yeah, he was just giving me money for basically teaching him english but there was no teaching involved and i wasn't giving him anything like like that in return at all um it was very much <laughs> a father-daughter relationship it felt like but like even my own dad he's not just putting two hundred thousand in my hand just for no reason just for taking me out for the day basically that's what actually happened he would take me out for the day and give me money like pay me for like <laughs> spending the day with him which is basically what Sugar Daddy does. So. so I hope you guys enjoyed this little story time of mine. And thank you so much for watching. And if you have not done so already, please, please, please hit that subscribe button down below. And don't forget to like this video and leave a comment down below. Let me know if you guys would like to hear more story times like this. I do have more story times about <laughs> older men and money <laughs> from back when I used to live in UK. So if you guys would like to know more about that and hear some story times about that, yeah, let me know in the comments below. Like I have dated a lot of older men, <laughs> so I can tell you those story times. They were interesting. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.